Hello and welcome to the Project Spark. I guess this is a live stream, live blog, or not even really live, is it? It's, it's a, like a preview blog of a blog preview. Yes, exactly. So yeah. this is um, this is sort of a like a live stream, only we're not live. So we're going to pretend we have a studio audience. But anyways, get to the point. My name is Michael Sco. I'm the community manager on Project Spark, and I'm here with Henry Sturchy, who is the creative director on Project Spark. And we know a lot of you folks aren't going to be able to go to PAX and we know there's going to be, you know, we're releasing some exciting news there uh, and some additional details on stuff. So we want to do a little quick blog, a little quick video blog for you guys just to give you some information on what's coming up and, and what we have and give you a taste. And obviously you're going to want to check some of the more information. We'll have we'll probably do a stream next yeah. week. Are you committing to that, Henry? Yeah, I think we can get a stream together and show a little bit more of the behind the scenes. And uh, hopefully we'll have some cool surprise announcements that we can dig into a little bit more in the stream as well. Yeah, sounds good. Cool. So this is our PAX build, um, which is what we're showing off at PAX. And Henry's using this. this is the Win8 version. He's using an uh, Xbox controller, for those of you keeping track at home. So we will have the Xbox One version at PAX, and we will be showing some of the uh, Kinect capture and voice capture and facial expression capture that we talked about uh, before. Here I'm just using our cool 3D sculpting tools to go and build out a level really quick. Um, this is not U-shaped unless maybe if we zoom really far out it might be similar. <laughs> it might be kind of U-shaped, but, but we're, we're trying not to U-shape too much. If there was a chat, they'd be yelling at you right now. That's right. Um, but we're going to show off some cool stuff. Here's some more of the uh, tunneling tool that we've showed off before, uh, using it to actually carve out some depth around our plateaus um, and show you a little bit more of what we can do with that tunneling tool than just what we've showed before. But um, there's going to be some really cool stuff. There'll be a rotating stage demo um, that you guys can stop by. I think it's like 10.30, 12.30, 2.30, and 4.30. Uh, I'm not sure if that's accurate for I think it's about days. every two hours, so just hang it's around. Yeah, you'll see it. So, so that'll be really cool. Um, and we're going to be showing some cool new stuff. So, for example, here one of the things we haven't touched on before is the roughen brush. Uh, and this really lets you flesh out some of the kind of topography and give your, your world a little organic look. So if you can see here, I'm tapping around the world and we're just roughing this up a little bit and giving it a, a bit more of a natural look to it. And it's again, one of the really quick and easy ways to bring the, the 3D sculpting to life. So we're showing some of this. Um, and again, we're just gonna do a quick preview here. That'd be a um, great uh, character last kind of name, uh, Rough and Brush. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could use it for stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so, so I'm gonna show here, uh, we're going into a bit of the, the biome stuff. And this is our desert biome, which lets you very quickly and easily paint in the world. We've shown some of this stuff before. Um, but one of the really cool things that we're going to touch is being able to combine these biomes. Uh, you can put more than one together. So again, we're going to very quickly um, you know, show how we can bring the world to life. Different sized brushes uh, bring out different sized um, objects and things like that when you paint. So here I'm in a smaller brush. Uh, let me get really small here. You can see a lot smaller trees. Um, but you can easily combine these two biomes, which makes a, a pretty rich looking world. Are those trees new? Those and then, uh, no, I think they're, uh, they're only there when you use a small uh, oh. brush or when you put them in manual. And then you know, make some rivers and some cool stuff like that. So one of the other things that we want to go into here is um, some of the fun stuff around our character. But again, you can quickly see how fast we can make a world. So let's dive into some of the, a little bit of a preview of what we're doing with the character. We are going to be talking about some of the customization elements around the character, but we are going to be focused for packs uh, around the, oh, sorry, that's the brain. We are going to be focused around the uh, clothing and coloring options. So here you can see we can go into our character, we can use the stick to move around, and we can do some cool stuff like change some of the gear. Again, we've got just a small sample of our test gear in here. Um, you can go ahead and change uh, individual elements, so changing the, the chest pieces of the clothes, change out some of the hands, uh, empty it out so you actually have nothing there, uh, go around to the legs, and then some of the really cool stuff is you can go uh, you can go ahead and you can do some coloring of these items as well. So let's go to the helmet. Um, it's kind of one of the more impactful ones. So I can go in here and I can com oh, that's neat. I can zoom around, show some of the back show just a really good variety of the colors. And you can see here I can really individually control it. Uh, they'll have some presets uh, that you can go ahead and jump in between. But it gives you a lot of freedom just to mix and match these clothing pieces and do a bunch of the different coloring elements. So here I can go ahead and I can change um, just kind of the, the steel wing portion. 
give them kind of a cool look. And then you can see there the helmet has a couple color channels, but you can see here we can dive really deep into something like the chest piece, and it's got just a ton of different stuff. So you can just change the stitching, some of the metal bits, uh, and stuff like that. So that's some of the stuff we're going to show. Um, as you guys have seen before, uh, I'm going to go ahead and test, and now we have our kind of yellow helmet. We've showed you some of the cool stuff you can do making terrain. Uh, and using our terrain building character to do stuff. You've seen us uh, sort of do things where we run outside the world um, and show you the new stuff that we talked about around big world, but we haven't really dove into the impact around big world and infinite world. So let's do something fun here. So let's go into the character. And this is, uh, this is something only here in the preview that we're gonna do real quick. But I'm gonna go to the character properties and let's change his movement speed and, and ratchet him up a little bit. So let's take him from, from five to eight. And then let's see how fast he can move around um, now. So you can see he's yeah, moving much better. faster. So let's run over here to the edge of our world where a lot, we've had a lot of people ask, you know, how big are the worlds? How big can we make them? So you can sort of see there's the, the edge of our water. So let's hop out there and let's go ahead and make some bridge and some terrain. And you may have seen some of this from Gamescom where we announced the motion capture and the big world feature. But here we go, we've got this dynamic world now. So as you run past the edge, the world can just go ahead and continue to zoom out. I think it's something like 25 square kilometers. Yeah, it's pretty huge. Tons of football fields, but you can see the world is slowly unfurling and catching up with you. And to give you some perspective now, we've sped up the character pretty substantially here. Yeah. Uh, a good percentage, and we can just keep running and keep running and running. And you can see the little play field area that we made in the very beginning is starting to get almost to be uh, a speck. But what makes this dynamic world really, really powerful, I'll keep running. <laughs> uh, and, and you know what I got? Let's you can go run up. and talk. We can go up and we can show <laughs> too. So, so we'll keep running and we'll keep talking. But what makes this really powerful is, you know, if you want to build big open world type things um, and stuff like that. But in addition to that, we want to make sure that we can support stuff where people can build their own dungeons, uh, combat arenas, and things like that. So when you combine this dynamic world scaling with what we call level linking, you truly have infinite worlds. And that's the right. real feature that we're excited about is infinite worlds. Because let me show you here. I used our little character to put down one of these level links. You can do all kinds of stuff with this level link. Um, you can put it in you know, different places. You can put it in a little tunnel and almost act like a stream. But you can essentially run, 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 level link to an entire another ginormous world. Here we've level linked into an overworld. So you can think of this as you know, a classic going from the desert uh, over to the forest, over to the ice or the castle, 1-1, 1-2, 1-3. One one, one a lot of power in that. So let's hop into our castle now that we've level linked into here. So again, just to recap for people, we ran, ran, ran outside our world, level linked to an overworld, now we're in a little castle. So now we can run around. People have been asking about interiors. Um, here's some cool stuff around the interior. So let's open our doors, and here's a little painting inside of our castle. <laughs> and this and is that looks like this, another yeah. level. So let's hit the button and level link into this yeah. level. And you can just keep doing this on and on and on and on. Now this is really cool. This is a hub world that's, that we made. And you can see what's here is we're actually showing some of the, the user generated content. So that you cannot, you don't have to just link to your own levels. So no. you can link to somebody else. You can link can to work together. Stuff. So you that's can, great. You can kind of promote some of your friends' levels or stuff like that. You can see there's a little road here that stretches on with lots and lots of other stuff. So, you know, this is some of the stuff you've seen here. We can hop into Gladiator, we can hop into Suspension, uh, we can hop into some of the stuff you've seen with Retro and Goblin Wings, and you can just go ahead now and launch an actual play along. Uh, that's awesome. User generated content level. And you can just go on and on and on, right? There's no limit. That's it's right. Like... It's completely infinite. And then you can hop back out here and do some more stuff. That is great, man. People are going to love that. So this is a twin stick shooter that uh, that we've got here. And this is one of the user generated content we've made. One of the cool things about this is we had a little cut scene, a little cinematic, and some things that you open up with. And uh, you can sit here and this level uh, starts ramping up. Lots and lots of goblins start dropping down. You can power up this fireball. It starts splitting into a three-directional fireball. Tougher enemies come in. Uh, and it's a cool, fun game. You've got a score and a timer. Uh, you've got a little combo thing to upgrade and multiplier. Uh, just, a, just a bunch of really cool, fun games. And you just did that by building a giant world, level linking, and level linking up. Yeah. So, Mike, what's a quick recap to the stuff that we're showing? So, we're showing off the, um, one of the big things is obviously the, the Kinect uh, motion capture, right? And that's going to be something that you need to see. We don't, we're going to try, we're going to try to get set up and do that, but we need to get the camera, we need a bigger room. And well, we've got two things, uh, four packs. We've got the stage show, 
Right. Um, so please come out. A bunch of us will be there. I'll be there for a little bit. Some of the team members will be there. They're uh, excited to come You spin the, the slot for, yes, for Rig the Goblin? Cool. So sign up for the beta, and you get to spin the, what did you call it? It's the, the Rig the Goblin the Goblin slot yes. machine of certain win. He says it's certain win. You're certain to win. I, I am I, I don't, dubious. I don't know if I believe that. He is a goblin. He's tricked me in blackjack. <laughs> exactly. Um, so I don't know. He's a little ornery. Um, so I don't know about that guy. But um, come out, spin the wheel. There's some cool prizes, shirts, and stuff like that. And in addition to that, we'll be on Twitch. Yep. So we'll be doing a Twitch on Saturday morning. It'll be a 20-minute Twitch. At uh, 10 a.m. We lost our background. Really? That's interesting. Whoa, holy cow. This is, you ever see Blair Witch? Uh, this is uh, one of those. Mike. Mike, we got pulled away, and I'm told we have to see what these guys are doing. All right. Here. All right. I don't know. This has got to be awesome. I'm they kept telling us. What have you been doing with the Kinect recording? See, you give, you give people a toy and tell them to, to make it work, and they just turn around and make just get a recording. They're choreography is better than most. It's impeccable. Look at them. They're really yeah. very cool. So again, come buy a pack. Come buy a pack. High. We'll Check do out a the demo. Watch us on Twitch TV forward slash Twitch, and um, we'll do another uh, live stream next week. Uh, tune in, guys.